Here's my best attempt at summarizing confidence intervals. Every confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. Now, the point estimate is usually p hat, um, sample proportion, or x bar, sample mean. And the margin of error consists of two things, a critical value, which is z star or t star, and a standard error, which could be any of these three different options. So what type of confidence interval should you use? That depends on what parameter you're estimating. If you're estimating population proportion, you use a one proportion z interval. So that's p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Now here's the conditions. First, you have to check that the data is a random sample. Next, you have to check independence. So if you're sampling without replacement, you need to check the 10% condition. Or sometimes the data is just independent by nature, for example, a coin toss. Finally, you need to check the normal condition. You have to check that np hat is greater than or equal to 10, so, so that means you have at least 10 successes in your sample, and nq hat is greater than or equal to 10, so you have to have at least 10 failures in your sample. Uh, note that most of the formulas actually use p, um, not p hat, but if p is unknown, it's okay to use p hat in the formula. After all, it's our best guess at what p is. If you're trying to estimate population mean, you either know sigma or not, and sigma is the population standard deviation. In reality, most of the time you wouldn't know that. But let's say you did know it. Then you could use a z interval. So that's x bar plus or minus z star times sigma over square root of n. In this case, your conditions for random and independent would be the same. But the normal condition, you would either have to know the population distribution is normally distributed, or if your sample size is at least 30, the central limit will apply, and the sampling distribution will be approximately normal. Now if sigma is not known, if you don't know the population standard deviation, you can still use a t-interval. That takes x bar, the sample mean, add and subtracts t star, times s sub x over the square root of sample size. Your random and independent conditions are the same as above, but for normal, there's lots of different ways you could meet it. First, if the population distribution is normal, then you're good. Or if your sample size is at least 30 again, you can use the central limit theorem. If your sample size is at least 15, but less than 30, as long as there's no outliers or strong skewness, you can use t procedures. Now, even if your sample is less than 15, if the sample data looks approximately normal, so if it's unimodal, has one peak, and it's roughly symmetric, you're okay. Your normal condition is met. One final note about finding the critical values. To find z star, use inverse norm, and you put the area to the left of your cutoff value, z star. To find t star, use inverse t. For this, you put the area to the left of your cutoff value, and then you also put in the degrees freedom, which is sample size minus one. I hope you liked the video, and if you want to learn more about confidence intervals, check out my confidence interval playlist. It starts with the basic concepts and builds all the way up to videos like this. There's also a video at the end that shows you which type of confidence interval to use for each circumstance.